Titles mean nothing to the Most High. I said again. Titles mean nothing to the Most High. That is the name of this topic. We're going to go to Colossians chapter three. Colossians chapter three, verse seventeen. Colossians three, chapter three, verse seventeen. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all by Shem and Mashiach Yahushai giving thanks to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by him. All praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by Shem Hamashek El I appreciate all you brothers from the Lions Roar. All praise. Um, we're going to go into this topic, and uh, we are talking about the titles that men hold on this earth. And uh, a lot of these titles are not given to the men by the Most High. A lot of them are self-proclaimed titles. A lot of these self-proclaimed titles even come from institutions. They're not from the Most High. We see that in the earth with these uh, the theology schools. You know, these schools don't necessarily go through the Bible for their curriculum. They use the church fathers, which are the Catholic fathers of Rome, and a lot of these. Uh, titles that these Catholic fathers of Rome use, such as apostles, is not biblical, you know, according to the Bible, because those who were called apostles were Hebrews. They weren't just called any nation. And so that in itself is a slander when it comes to the scriptures, when it comes to the Holy Bible. People are claiming things that they shouldn't be claiming, and we have seen that while we have been in the truth. I want to go to Matthew chapter 23, and let's go to verse 7. Matthew 23 and verse 7. And we're going to read down to 15. And it reads, And greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called Rabbi, so who's saying this? This is Yahweh Shai. He said, don't be called rabbi. Don't have people calling you rabbi. For one is your master, even Hamashiach, and all ye are brethren. Because when you call someone rabbi, you're claiming that this person, he's the all-knowing person over the flock. All right? Now, understand, Yahweh Shai is not denying functional differences. He's not denying functional roles within the church when he says this, nor is he suggesting that it is wrong to term like your biological parent, like your father, you know, to call him your father. They have a functional role on this earth, all these different sects. But he is speaking of not self-exalting yourself. The most rabbis self-exalt themselves. You know, it's like an honorific title upon the chosen to follow the Hamashiach. Most is not dealing with that, that exaltation. And a lot of the rabbis today, they exalt themselves over other people. These titles are the ways of the world. It is not the path that the Hamashiach is called to pursue. I'll start at verse 8 again. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Hamashiach. And all ye are brethren. Plainly, he forbids his followers from either, either, either giving or receiving some kind of honorific title. That's what he's basically saying to these. They have seen these rabbis their whole life, and they've seen the clout that they've had. I'm talking about the disciples. They've seen this thing. They grew up with it. It's kind of like us seeing the pastors of the churches. We've been known as a child to recognize the one who's speaking in the church as the official pastor or anyone who stands in that pulpit as the pastor, okay? And we have to understand that comes with a lot of um, experiences. 
Uh, verse 9, and call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Now, you have an earthly parent, which we, on this earth, we have a name for both earthly parents. One is your dad or your father, okay? The other one is your mother or your mom. He's not likening those to this. This is dealing with the scriptures. When someone grabs the scriptures, they are not your father just because they're sitting there telling you the right way to go, okay? They are basically on equal platforms roll with you as a servant. But he, what he's saying is there's still functional roles within the service, okay? And we get to that. But when you look at Father, notice in the Catholic churches, what do they call their minister? They call him Father, okay? They call the Pope Father. Wherever he goes, they call him Father. And this is what Yahweh and Yahweh Shai was speaking about. You don't call a man your father that's in the truth. You already have that established with your parents, your biological parents. And they're there for earthly things. They're earthly training you to learn the ways of this life, not as far as spiritual goes. So there is a title for those who take on the service, and we're going to read it. Let's keep reading. Verse 10. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Hamashiach. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. He's telling us right here that the greatest among you is still a servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So right here, the Most High is the one that's going to lift up whomever he will. Let's go to Daniel chapter 4. And we'll come back to this. Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. And it reads, This matter is by the decree of the watchers. Who are the watchers? These are the angels. And the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men. This is what he meant when he said he will exalt those who are humble. To be humble, a lot of times you are the basis. <laughs> you are the lowest of the low. So the most I said, if you give your life to me, I will exalt you. And we see it with all the different examples in the scriptures. He exalted Joseph. He exalted Daniel. He exalted Moses. He exalted all these people because of him, serving him. Abraham, he exalted him. We see it with our forefathers. They were all base men. Moses was working with the Hebrews in the mud. Okay, he wanted to be, find out what made them the people who they were. He knew that they were his people. He had to find out. He had to be the lowest of the low, just like them. Let's go to Hebrews real quick. Hebrews chapter 11. And let's go to verse 20, 23. 11 verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child, and they not afraid of the king's commandment. And they not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So he wanted to become a base man like his brother who were Hebrews. You see? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of the Most High than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. See that? So he wanted to be obedient. All the lust of Egypt, he had everything at his fingertips. He chose to be like the Hebrews who followed a strict regimen of following the Most High. 
you become base when you do that. You you become lower than the lowest, but at the same time, the Most High will exalt you. Let's go back to Matthew, and let's go to Matthew chapter 23 again and verse 11. Matthew 23, verse 11. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Moses was a servant to the Most High. He went back to be with his brother. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. What are these? Exalted names. Scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Yeah, the most I didn't give that name, Pharisees. For you devour widows' houses, and for pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Nobody wants to be on that end of the stick, receiving that damnation. That's why you can't usurp authority. You can't exalt yourself. You know, to be something that you're not. The Most High said, your speech is a damnation. Why? Because you're puffing yourself up. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him two, two more fold more than the child of hell than yourselves. What does that mean? Hey, man, I built you up. You know, I did that. I helped you get where you are. No, it's the most high. Remember, the most high waters and plants. Paul was humble. He was humble about that. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We got to look at the uh, examples of these prophets and these apostles, and we have to see how, we have to see how humble they were. Let's go to... 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4. For while one saith, I am Paul, and another, I am Apollo, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul? This man, this ain't nothing. And who is Apollo? But ministers by whom ye believe even as the Most High gave to every man. So every man has this faith that believes. They just got to act on it. You can't get a title unless you experience being in the truth and have experiences being in the truth. Verse 6, I have planted Apollo water. The Most High gave the increase. Who gave the increase? The Most High did. He exalted. The Most High gave them. Our job is just to go and teach, man. It's a blessing when people are being blessed by what we say according to the Bible, according to the words of the Most High. You know, we are not looking for vain fame. All we want is brothers to wake up, brothers and sisters to wake up, right, so the Most High can give the increase. Verse 7, so then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth. He said, you ain't nothing. What's the title of this? Titles mean nothing to the Most High. The Most High said, you ain't anything. You're just a vessel. But the Most High that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. What's the most important thing about being in this truth? Labor. By laboring, you gain experiences. By laboring, you show that you are worthy. Okay? It's not about the name. Your name is nothing. Unless it was prophetically given to you to carry on a message like the prophet's. I don't think none of us got that. 
by the Most High. Verse 9, for we are laborers together with the Most High. Ye are the Most High's husbandry. You know what a husbandry is? It's somebody who takes care of a field, like a farmer. All the plants and vegetables and fruits out in that farm is his husbandry. He's taking care of that. Or his children. You know, that's husbandry. Ye are the Most High's building. According to the grace of the Most High, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Who laid it? The Most High. And another buildeth thereon. Who's building thereon? The Most High is the one who caused all this to happen. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. If we build a foundation based on the law, statutes, and commandments, and somebody else come in, and they want to build on top of that foundation, and they start talking all types of profanities and ill will, but they're standing on our foundation that the Most High gave us, guess what? It's going to come to null and void. That's why we have to be suspect of who comes in to teach. We have to be suspect of those who gather with us. <laughs> we have to be because the foundation is established upon the law, statutes, and commandments. We come to this conference call based on the law, statutes, and commandments, what we're going to learn according to the law, statutes, and commandments, and the salvation of Hamashiach. If anybody else come in here teaching something different, we ought to be suspect of them quickly and recognize that they are not of the spirit of the Most High. That's why we have to be cautious of the foundation that's here and who steps in. You don't hear us talking about multiple wives. You know, hear us usurping authority, saying I'm chief chief priest, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's not this foundation. We base everything off the law, statutes, and commandments. We keep it real simple. Yahweh Shai says, my yoke is easy. We're not trying to make it hard for people. We just want them to get this truth, get this understanding, get this word of the Most High. That's all we're trying to do. And in it, in it, in itself, it's going to be established. All right, we all have something to do here. Verse 10, according to the grace of the Most High, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is what? The Hamashiach Yahushai. If you're an Old Testament Israelite and you come up in here, and you're trying to persuade everybody to be Old Testament Israelites, that's not what the foundation was built on. The foundation was built on Yahweh Shai being the salvation through his father. So we got to keep this foundation clear of any, any wrongdoing, okay? And when you look at the churches today, their foundation is not based on the law, statutes, and commandments. They're not going to let us come in there and build on their wicked foundation. It's not going to stand at all. Let's move on. Uh, basically, these titles are the ways of the world. It is not the path that Hamashiach has called us to pursue. You know, he wants us to follow what he's laid down for us. You know, uh, look at the titles in the church today. Some of the titles that they have is reverend. You know, you got Doctor, some brothers call themselves doctor. Some brothers call themselves minister. Think about that. And when you look at these, if you look at each name, you know, some brothers even call themselves elders or pastors. And okay, we've heard that all our life, pastor, elders. But when you look at names like, uh, for example, reverend, okay, reverend, is an old Quaker English name, 1500s, okay? Reverend, it means worthy of deep respect. In order to be a reverend, you got to go through some things, okay? Not just, you know, you talk to most people, everybody got some experiences where they skidded through life and almost had an episode with death, and everybody has these type of example stories to talk to you about. But when it comes to being called a reverend, you got to have some experiences, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to have some biblical experiences to 
you know, going back and forth with people out there on the street speaking, dealing with brethren and sisters on a regular basis, helping the sick. To be called reverend, that's what you have to have. To be called doctor, that's a whole other thing because we realize in the book of Luke, the us of Luke, chapter 2, doctors is in the scriptures. Verse 46, and it came to pass that after three days they found him, who's the him, Yahushai, in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Who are the doctors? You got to remember the scriptures tells you that the Levitical priest had the power to medicate, to heal, to clear someone from any kind of disease. They were considered doctors. They were also considered doctors of the law because of that. So when it comes to calling somebody doctor in the church, do they know the laws of God? Do they know how to heal somebody? You see this exalted name here? This is not the doctor that we read that's in the Bible. This is a different doctor. This is the person who went to school and got a doctor's degree. This is not the doctor, the Levitical priest way of calling himself a doctor. He don't know the laws. Uh, you could challenge this guy, and he probably won't know the laws. You could go over biblical things as far as leprosy, and he won't know it in Leviticus chapter 13. So this is not proclaim, This is not a uh, uh, prophetic doctor, okay? This is a proclaimed doctor who went to these theology schools. So it's not the same thing. And when it comes to reverend, you got some brothers that are, 20 years old call themselves reverend. What have they experienced at 20 years old? Same thing with ministers. Okay? Reverend and minister, they go hand in hand. You know, what have they done to gain someone's respect? How about bishop? Bishop is in the Bible. Okay? That's a name that you could go to. Bishop. When you look at a, a bishop, a, a bishop is like a consultant. Now, you can't have a business without having some kind of a consultant. Consult the businesses. A bishop is a spiritual overseer or or like an administrative overseer because they're over a number of churches. That's a hard task. You, you're dealing with multiple people's lives. And, yes, that has to have a certain title, but you have to have experience to be a bishop. You just don't become a bishop overnight. You have to be able to teach. You have to be able to sanctify. And you have to be able to govern. All of these things goes along with the bishop. You're like a serious consultant. So all of these titles, you have to really look within it, but the most I don't care about it if you're not dealing with it right. Look at an elder. When you look at the elders, right, what does an elder mean? It means to be responsible for the leadership of the church. Let's go to First Timothy 5 and 17. What is the most I said we all are? We're all servants, all of us. But the longer you're in this truth, duties are established for you to do more. First Timothy Chapter 5, verse 17, and it says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Right? If this is a man that is helping people, motivate people to stay positive, and, you know, that's an elder. You've been in the truth a long time. An elder is somebody who has reached the age of 50 and up. That's an elder, 30 years in his truth. So elder, still doing the work, still teaching and, and reaching out to brothers and sisters. That's an elder. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. It's not usurping authority over somebody, telling them, hey, I'm greater than you and this and that. No, you got to remember what Paul said. He says he watered in Apollo's planet. The most high got the increase. It says, for the scriptures say, thou shalt not. Muscle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer 
is worthy of his reward. If you stay in the truth and you don't go to the left, go to the right, and you stay focused, the most high will have you get increased. You will be blessed. Let's go to Titus. Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1 verse 9. And this is enough, this is what an elder should be doing. Titus 1 and 9. Holding fast a faithful word as he hath been taught. So somebody else had to teach him. We all are learning from each other, like I said at the beginning of the class. We're learning from each other. We all have to be taught. It says, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able to buy sound doctrine. Coming off a foundation that's already been established, he's building what? His faith. Not by his ego but by his faith, that he may be able able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. You see that? Let's go to another verse. Let's go to Acts chapter 20 and 17. And from Miletus he sent to Ephesians. And called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Most High with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying and weight of the Jews. You see all that Paul went through? That's what the elders got to go through. And he has to have that type of mind. Like, Brother Yahar came up with that class, uh, The Arm of the Most High. That one was heavy when he said to us, Yahweh was led to the slaughter and didn't threaten anyone. That's humility. That's experience. That's age. He didn't threaten anyone. You know, most people want to threaten you. Like, you put somebody's life in jeopardy, they're going to, man, my big brother's going to come take care of you. You keep doing this. Or, or my cousin's coming. Call such and such. Come take, come show them. You know, we normally like to boast and threaten people when they try to do something to harm us. Yeah, I wish I didn't even do that. Look at the um, book of Maccabees when the seven brothers got ready to get slain. What did they kept telling uh, the Edomite king? They kept telling them, you will get worms. You will not rise for the resurrection. They were threatening him. You see what I'm saying? Most of the prophets and these kings and stuff threatened the other people that was trying to harm them. But Yahweh Shai didn't threaten nobody upon the slaughter. That's hard to do. Not to say nothing negative. That's what deserves a title. That's when you deserve a title by the most high. When you can maintain and and your integrity and hold fast and be disciplined and not to give in and cut somebody out. It's hard not to cut somebody out. You know, we go to one to 10 in 5.2 seconds for some of us. <laughs> you know, uh, look at uh, Nehemiah. Nehemiah's ready to put hands on those people, man. He couldn't take it no more. You know, so he had threatened them. But we have to understand that Yahweh Shai is our pin, he's our pinpoint. We gotta follow him to the Father. If we can copy his ways, we'll be set for the new kingdom. We'll be set. So when you look at um, these titles like elder and pastor, I mean words like pastor that's in the scriptures in Isaiah fifty four. But pastor means to be a feeder of the sheep. It means to be a helper. When you ha- when you have sheep, you help them. You feed them. You watch over them. You protect them. That's what a pastor is. Let's go to Acts chapter 20. Most of our brothers don't know how to do that. Man, it's all, you know, all they care about is themselves. They just want the title. They want other people to respond, but they got to be responding more than other people. They got to do more to get that uh, acknowledgement. Acts chapter 20, 
And that's why the Israelite churches aren't that big. That's one of the main reasons. You know, when we can get together and gather and have things for other people, that's a blessing. You know, that's when, you know, it means something. That's when you get to know a person when you have things, when you gather. Acts chapter 20, verse 17, but it has to be on the right foundation, right? It has to always be on the right foundation. Acts chapter 20, verse 28, a couple of steps down. Yeah, this is going. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Spirit hath made ye overseers to feed the church of the Most High, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So we have to take heed. That charity is big, isn't it? It's a big thing. But um, the Christian world is consumed with exalted and honorific titles, you know, especially those in position of leadership and influence. Some pastors even get offended when um, some members address them by the first name. They want to be called titles. Man, you better call me a doctor. I, I went to school for eight years, and you calling me by my first name? They get offended. Okay? You didn't call me high priest chief, chief high priest. You didn't call me the super apostle. You know, don't, they can't get offended. When you call him by the first name, what was your house size title? Did they call him the King of Kings when he was walking the earth? Did they say my high priest? Did they say no? They said son of David. That's what they called him. They called him your house size. That's what they called him. He didn't have a title. Nobody called him. They called him the Hamashiach. Only those who knew him, and he told them to keep quiet. So these titles don't mean nothing to the Most High. Are titles necessary? Yeah, they're necessary. Some titles are necessary. Not for everybody, though. You know, some people don't need a title. They don't know how to act. But most titles are necessary. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 3. Especially in large congregations, you need to establish order for large congregations because chaos can break loose. Anarchy can break loose within a congregation. So you got to have somebody to establish the order within these congregations that are 100 plus people. You know, you need some kind of order. Um, First Timothy chapter three, verse two. And this is the order they got to be in. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he says, desire it. And that means they got their eye on this position. <laughs> what is their foundation based on? What type of man is this? How many experiences have they dealt with the people? Because people could call you out based on your experiences. They'd be like, man, you dealt wrong with me. You know, so there's a voting process that goes on. You just don't nominate somebody to be a bishop. You know, it's a voting process to put the right person in this leadership role. Just can't just put anybody there. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be what? Blameless. The husband of one wife. Vigilant. Sober of good behavior given to hospitality, apt to teach. Now, most of your jobs are set up like this, too. You just don't take a position. You Normally, they got like an uh, entry-level requirement, right, for a lot of them. And so you look at the requirements, and you see if you qualify for these requirements. Do You know, can I do this, this, and that? Will I be okay? Can my mind mentality take this? Like a fireman, for example. You know, you just don't become a fireman overnight. You got to take a test. Then you got to go through a series of interviews. Then you got to have the right charismatic behavior, the right patience. Going into the military is that way. 
Everybody can go into the military. Don't they ask for everybody? But when it comes to climbing ranks, you got to have the right mind. You just don't jump into a rank. You don't go from an E4 to E8 just like that because you want to. <laughs> you got to do different things in the military to get to those positions, let alone general, like Colin Powell was a general. How do you get to be where he was with all those medals on his on his jacket? So there's a criteria for you gaining these positions. The Most High is giving it right here for a bishop. He says, be blameless, the husband of one wife. That eliminates how many people right there, the husband of one wife. You, you don't weed it out. 90% of the Israelites right there, husband or one wife, all right? Vigilant, sober, you can weed it out another 5% of the Israelites, <laughs> being sober, most of them with a drink. Of good behavior, another 2%. Give it to hospitality, 1%. Apt to teach, everybody want to teach, that's not a problem. Not give it to wives. Another half percent. No striker? Oh, man, that's part of that 50% that left. Not greedy of filthy lucre? That's another. I mean, we just keep taking percentages out. But patient, not a brawler, nor covetous, one that ruleth well his own house. So now you're down to about 1% of Israelites out of 100% that's qualified for this job as a bishop. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it's a criteria that you have to fit. You just don't just jump in a position. You don't claim to be I'm um, so and so, I'm this, I'm that, but they all just quick, quick, whack. You don't want to, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to be a part of that. So there's a criteria that the Most High has. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of the Most High? See that? So there is an order when it comes to taking a title. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. Yahushua didn't even want this title. He didn't want this title. Let me go to, um, I want to go to Mark chapter 10, verse 43. Mark chapter 10, verse 43. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. See that? What does great among you mean? That means somebody's doing everything that we just went over, even with the bishop. A minister is the same thing as a pastor. A minister is putting his life on the line for the most high sheep. He's serving the most high at the best of his ability. But Yahushua called them to him and said unto them, Ye know. We know that they which are a competent to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. All of this that you're dealing with is just a part of life, but you got to help other people in their lives. Let's go to uh, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians. Philippians. All right, Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. This is Yahweh Shai. He took no no name of reputation. His name was Yahweh Shai. Okay? The Hamashiach. And everybody didn't know he was the Hamashiach. The son of the Most High made himself of no reputation. He was meek and lowly. That's the son of the Most High making himself of no reputation. Let's go to Numbers chapter 3. Numbers chapter 3. And let's go to 44. Numbers chapter 3, verse 44. And the Most High spoke unto Moses, saying, 
take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and the cattle of the Levites instead of their cattle, and the Levites shall be mine. I am the Most High Yahweh. All right. So the Levites were chosen by the Most High to provide a service to the other 11 tribes. So the service is what make up all those names that I mentioned earlier, a doctor, a minister, a pastor, bishop. Okay, a bishop is still a servant, even though he got the name bishop, being a consultant over all the other churches. He's still a servant. He's still got to do the same thing that we all do, just more. Okay, it's almost stressful because you're, doing, you're dealing with other people's families. Let's go to verse 38. But those that encamp before the tabernacle toward the east, even before the tabernacle of the congregation eastward, shall be Moses and Aaron and his son, keeping the charge of the sanctuary. Remember I said that a bishop got to be sanctified, be able to govern. Remember I said that? All right. For the charge of the children of Israel, so we're talking about a sanctuary, and the stranger that cometh near shall be put to death. Anybody just can't walk up and do these jobs? Be put to death. Ain't nobody dealing with them. You just can't walk up in any congregation on somebody's foundation and just start teaching. That don't happen. You got to be there for a while. Any of you brothers and sisters can teach a class. Y'all been here for a while. Any of y'all can hold class. But Say your cousin, for example, ain't never been to one class, show up, hey, I want to teach a class. He can't teach. The most I said in the scriptures when he dealt with the Levites, anybody that tried to do that got put to death. Serious. This is a very serious thing. Verse 39, all that were numbered of the Levites, which Moses and Aaron numbered at the commandment of the most High throughout their families, all the males from a month old and upward were 20 and 2,000. And the Most High said unto Moses, Number all the firstborn of the males of the children of Israel. I'm on verse 40. Verse 40. From a month old and upward, and take the number of their names. And thou shalt take the Levites for me, I am the Most High, instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel. And the cattle of the Levites, instead of all the firstlings among the cattle of the children of Israel. See that? So the Most High is numbering his chosen people, but then he's numbering a group within his chosen people that he is marking them to do a service for the 11 tribes, which is the Levites. So the Most High can nominate you and put you within a title position, but when he nominates you, best believe, you got no choice but to do it, or what? You'll be put to death. So the Levites sacrificed their own bodies every single day for the Most High. They couldn't deviate. They couldn't go and do what they wanted to do. They had to do that wherever they went in the earth. They had to do the same thing every time. And it was known amongst the clergy of the 12 tribes of Israel. Let's go to First Samuel chapter 22. Look at how these priests put themselves on the line when it came to Saul. Saul was wicked as hell to take out these men serving in a position for the service of the Most High. Let's go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 9. 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 9. 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 9. We'll start at 7 and drop down to 9. Then Saul said unto his servants that stood about him, Hear now, ye Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards and make you all captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, that all you have conspired against me? And there is none that showeth me that my son have made a league with the son of Jesse, Jonathan and King David. 
And there is none of you that is sorry for me. For sure unto me that my son has stirred up my servant against me to lie in wait at the stake. This is when Saul was chasing David. Okay, now check out what happens. How these priests holding this service, this position that the Most High put them in, look at the fear of the Israelites. Saul is so mad that nobody is coming to his aid that he's going to turn around and choose somebody who don't honor the service that the Most High deemed upon the Levites. Verse 9, then answered Doeg the Edomite. Who was with Saul? Who was with the Benjamites? An Edomite. He was a soldier in the army of Israel. Edomite. See this? Then answered Doeg the Edomite, which was set over the servants of Saul, and said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob, to Hamalek, the son of Atta. And he inquired of the Most High for him and gave him victuals, goods, and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Saul running around with Goliath's sword. See that? Then the king sent to call Ahimelech, the priest, the son of Atub, in all his father's house. The priests that were in Nob, just think about Nob Hill. Some cities got a a, a high end place like New York or, or San Francisco, L.A. They got a high end place called Nob Hill. This is where all the upper echelon people go, listen to uh, orchestrated music and stuff like that. So the priests were in a choice place up in the mountains. The place called Nob Hill. Okay, and this is where they had the um, Temple at. This is where they had their worship services at. It says, and they came all of them to the king. And Saul said, Hear now, thou son of Atu. And he answered, Here I am, my power. So Saul had all the priests called to stand in front of him. Every single priest, Levitical priest. He made them all come stand right in front of him. And Saul said unto him, Why have you conspired against me? Thou and the son of Jesse, talking about the high priest, in that thou hast given him bread and a sword and has inquired of the Most High for him, that he should rise against me to lie in wait, as at this day. He said, why are you feeding this man that I'm chasing? I'm trying to kill him. You up here feeding him. Now he done got away. So he's yelling at the priest. Then Ahimelech answered the king and said, and who is so faithful among the servants? as David, which is the king's son-in-law, and Gorf at thy bidding, and is honorable in thine house? Did I then begin to inquire of the Most High for him? Be it far from me, let not the king impute anything unto his servant, nor to all the house of my father. For thy servant knew nothing of all this, less or more. And the king said, Thou shalt surely die, Himelech, thou and all thy father's house. So here's the king threatening the priest. The king is threatening the priest of the Most High. Who does that? And the king said unto the footman that stood about him, turn and slay the priest of the Most High, because their hand also is with David, jealousy, and because they knew when he fled and did not show it to me, but the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priest of the Most High. Think about it. If you killed the priest that the Most High said, what do you think is going to happen to you? You're going to die. Somebody's going to kill you. And then you're going to die again in the next life for killing one of the Most High's priests. So none of the children of Israel was about to step forward and kill a high priest or a priest. You see that? So I was trying to put all these people in jeopardy. Verse 18. And the Most High come and hunt their children and their children's children on top of that. Verse 18, and the king said to Doeg, the Edomite, turn thou and fall upon the priest. And Doeg, the Edomite, turned and he fell upon the priest and slew on that day four score and five persons, 405 priests that did wear a linen ephod. See that? And now the city of the priests smite he with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and sucklings, 
and oxen and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. So they slayed not only the Levitical priests, but even their children and their wives and their and their animals. That's how wicked Saul was. Okay? All these priests had a title. The most I gave them the title. It's different than a self exalted title. They had they were stuck in that position. They couldn't get out of it. The most I had to protect he was protecting them. But he allowed Saul to kill all these people, but not by the hand of Israel, he used a Gentile, an Edomite, an Edomite soldier. Isn't that something? So certain titles the most high would give us, and other titles man would give us. There's certain people that the most high give his name to, like a prophetic name, like he'll come to send an angel and give a name to. That's not a title, but he'll give him a name with a mission because of that name to carry it out. But a lot of us get Hebrew names, and it's not really for a mission. You know, some of us get names like uh, Lightning Bird. You know, we, we get the same kind of names that the Indian chiefs gave the Indians that was running around in the plains of America. You know, Bear Claw. <laughs> you know, Novit Omen type names because of what we did the first eight days of our lives before they named us, you know, but the most high gives names, and those names stick to you like glue. Are those titles? Those not those are not titles, those are prophetic names. It's a difference. Matthew chapter eleven, verse twenty nine. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What is Jehovah Shai talking about? He's telling us while we're in this captivity, we're going to do a service for him, but it's not going to be the same service as the Levitical priest's order. They failed at their order in their service. And because they failed, we fail. And you read Hosea 4 and 6, it says, My people are lost for a lack of knowledge. All right? It said, Therefore, you shall not be no priest to me. No priest. Okay, let's go to Hebrews chapter 7. So he's telling us while we're in this captivity, we're going to still uphold the righteous acts and the righteous laws, but the service of the Levites, none of us could possibly do it in this lifetime because we don't have the right foundation to build on that. We have nobody else teaching us how to be a correct Levitical priest. Hebrews chapter 7. I mean, we can follow the manuscript, but I'm sure we'll be off. Hebrews chapter 7. Verse 12. Hebrews 7 to 12. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. What was, what was that? This is where the churches get tangled tangled up. What was changed? If we're talking about the priest, the priest had an order to what? To sacrifice. To sacrifice. To heal Israel, right? To sacrifice. We don't have that opportunity. We don't have the same ordinances now to sacrifice. We can't do it the way that they did it then. You know, most of us who are Le Le Levite priests are lost in our way. You know, we're not all gathering together as Levitical priests, those who are from that tribe. We're all over the place. All right, so this priesthood is being changed based on a necessity, right? For he of whom these things are spoken pertain to another tribe of which, men know, of which no man gave attendance at the altar, for it is evident that our Hamashiach sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. See that? So as far as calling yourself a high priest of the Levitical order, 
That person don't know what they're talking about. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. Mosai did a change. He did a rift in that until the kingdom comes. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. For the law have a shadow of good things to come because it was never a bad thing, right? The law itself was never a bad thing, but the people who were doing the service made it a bad thing. It says, for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices, which they offer year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. See that? So he's telling you right there. There's no way we could make this thing perfect. We could try. We could strive. But none of us could be called a high priest or a high chief priest. So these titles got to go, brothers, as far as that goes, these chief priests and things like that, you know, because there's no way we could keep that. Uh, but, you know, today a lot of brothers have a sense of entitlement. They want to be something that they're not, and they entitle themselves to be that. And it's and it's wrong. Let's go to Acts chapter 15. Let's go to Acts chapter 15, verse 26. Men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Hamashiach Yahushai, we have sent therefore... Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, Ye shall do well, fare ye well. We are still supposed to abstain from meats offered to idols. So some people say, well, Leviticus chapter 11, the dietary law is gone because that service that the Levitical priest did, it's over with. No, that's not true. He tells us here to abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication. That was going on in Corinthians. From which, if you keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. What does Jehoshaphat mean? To save his people from the sins. But he's going to get another name, y'all. The, ne the next name is going to be along with his title. You see? Remember, he was humble all the way to the gate, all the way to the cross. He didn't threaten anybody. He never exalted himself. Okay? We have to understand that we are on the same wavelength as him as far as getting a title and a name. Let's go to Revelations. I'm going to bring out two more verses. Revelations chapter 19. Look at the title. We know he's a high priest when we read uh, Hebrews chapter 10, but he, he didn't even want that name. I get that real quick, so I'll make it three verses. Hebrews chapter ten, verse uh, Hebrews chapter eight, verse one. Now of the things, this is Hebrews chapter eight, verse one. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven. So now, right there, we know that Yahweh now is a high priest. That's his title, right? A minister of the sanctuary, he's also a minister of the sanctuary, and of the true tabernacle, which the Most High pitched, and not man. This tabernacle was on earth. This is what the Levitical priesthood had. Remember, whatever is established in heaven is established on earth. So this was already established in heaven. Yahweh Shai was within that tabernacle. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, whereupon it is necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, 
seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. She kept the law perfectly. So she didn't even want to be a priest on this earth. They're already priests established within the Levitical order. But now he is in heaven as a high priest. That's his new rank. Revelation chapter 19. Revelation 19 and 12. Revelation 19 and 12. I'm going to read down to 16. His eyes were as a flame of fire, or Revelation 1 and 13, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. So he has another name. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of the Most High. That's in Exodus 6. His name was called the word of the most high. Look at Exodus 6 real quick. We'll come right back. Exodus 6, chapter 1. What does it say? Exodus 6, verse 1. It says, Then the most high said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand, that strong hand, shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And the Most High spoke unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Most High. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of the Most High Almighty. But by my name, Yahweh, was I not known to them. All right? So what was he known as? The Word of the Most High. He's the one that came down. It's the same entity, but this is his son. The word of the Most High. He says, I am. And the armies which were in heaven follow him. Up. We're going back to Revelation chapter 19, verse 14. Revelation 19, verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven follow him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth go off a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nation. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty power. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords, Masiach. Of Mashiach. So that's who that is coming back. Yahweh Shai is coming back as a king of kings and lord of lords, and he will have a new name, just like we will have a new name and a new title. Last verse, Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. Revelation chapter 2, let's start at 16. Revelation 2 and 16. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly. Meaning he's going to come and kill you. <laughs> but he says, repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat the hidden manna, and we give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, save he that receiveth it. So the Most High is going to give us a new name along with a new title when he comes back. All right? That's what we're waiting on. So titles do have a significance in heaven. Okay? When he returns. Right now, the only reasons why we have titles is to officiate our functions in the church. But when the Most High returns, we are going to have official titles. 
With that being said, we're going to end this class. And all praise to Most High Yahweh by Hashem and Mashiach Yahushai. I hope there was some understanding to this class. Uh, are there any questions, statements, or comments? This is the word of the Lord of hosts. I took you from the pastures and from following the sheep to be prince over my people as well. I have been with you wherever you have gone and have destroyed all the enemies in your path. I will make you a great name among the great ones of the earth. I will assign a place for my people in Israel. There I will plant them, and they shall dwell in their own land. several times with the ego, with not being humble, all the things that you brought scripture out to support it. And, and they get all of a sudden like they are super characters now. And they, you know, they rise and they elevate themselves. And we already saw what the Most High said about those who exalt themselves will be debased and those who are humble will be lifted. So, you know, we see that a lot in, in, in all aspects. We see it in the, um, in the other religious organizations that we came out of. Um, we saw, and it's still prevalent, but we also see it within our own so-called awakened community um, where we have, and I often have to sit and talk to brothers about that, about um, taking on these titles, especially when they start something, you know, when they, when they say, hey, I want to start something, we can do a reach out and blah, blah, blah. And they put their energies into it, which is great. But then they think that that is a reward the same way those guys go to theology school and get that doctor or something onto their on that paper and from their hard work. And they think that they now must demand that type of respect. And I think that's where they go out of bounds. They you got to throw the flag on them, you know. <laughs> They out of bounds, you know. So that, that's just good stuff, man. And it's it's something that that uh, we see a lot. So that's what a lot of Israel we have to pay attention to. That you know that when you build something, when you're trying to build something for the glory of the Most High, you must keep yourself humble and not let it um, take over you. 